Well, 2017 was just an outbreak year for white flies in cotton, a devastating pest. So in some cases, you'll have 100% crop loss. Yellow squash, we were probably close to, you know, 80% losses in the fall. This was, it was a brand new problem for many, many folks. In cotton, it was a hundred dollar an acre pest. We've got to do something to corral these white flies. If we don't, our vegetable industry is going to be gone. In 17, instead of 388,000, we packed 88,000 boxes of squash. So it's a dr dramatic uh, decrease in production. Agriculture as a whole, and farmers in particular, look to our college, look to the University of Georgia for answers and solutions. Of course, we start with our county agent, Scott Carlson, and we, we call him out to the fields, and then we get all the specialists out to the field. Extension has a huge role in understanding this problem and taking this problem to the administrators, to the uh, basic scientists, and to other specialists so that we can get those people on board to work on this common problem. We've had some successes on looking at uh, resistance to some of these viruses and so some of the tactics that the farmers are doing um, when there's an older crop in the field they're destroying that crop so it doesn't serve as a reservoir for white flies. Um, they're being very diligent on scouting and control and they're also st starting to look at more resistant varieties. Our, our research focuses on work that's done in the field as well as in the greenhouse and in the lab but we also focus on developing a holistic strategy to combat this problem that's plaguing Georgia's growers. So it's really a um, kind of an interdisciplinary approach uh, that ourselves and the farmers are taking. With regards to management options, we do not have much. White flies are one of the most complex pests that we deal with. We've got a very short life cycle. That life cycle can be as short as 15 days up to about 30 days. And so in 15 days, you can have an entire new generation. Uh, they'll mate within just a few hours of emerging and the next females will start laying eggs within 24 hours. And then a very wide host range, that means that they can reproduce on a great number of both agronomic crops as well as non-agronomic crops. They also transmit plant diseases, so there's a plant disease component as well that we have to tackle. They can transmit viruses, the two important viruses, namely cucurbit leaf crumple virus and cucurbit yellowstone disorder virus. And so it just takes one white fly to transmit um, a lethal virus virus to our vegetable crop. And so there's no insecticide that would allow you to control absolutely 100%. At present, we've got three different classes of insecticides that work. We're primarily relying on insect growth regulators. Um, they are very effective, but under extremely high population density, uh, that may not be enough uh, management to uh, avoid economic losses. The best option for managing white fly transmitted viruses rolled over is to use resistance. And this would apply as an alternative to insecticides. And that would be the, probably the silver bullet if we could say that. But we're at least five to 10 years away from doing such a thing. We already have white flies now. So we're, we're, we're right back in it again, trying to control these viruses and everything. The new technologies, new innovations that are developed in very basic research laboratories. Eventually we have to put all that together and come up with a workable program or a workable plan, a strategy. In terms of dealing with this problem, we've got great support in terms of our growers helping us, our administrators helping us, as well as our great research team that we have. Wherever there is a challenge, there is an opportunity. So now this is an opportunity for us to solve this issue. And this, this is a kind of motivation for us too.